Good afternoon. Um, we hope you enjoy your lunch. And we are about to start the next round of talks. Uh, the first one is uh, from Fraser Edwards from Schecht. So let's come on in. Yep. Hi. Um, so yeah, I'm Fraser from Checked, um, and we created the Trusted Data Economy. Um, and the title of this is Zero Personal Knowledge Ledgers. So did a bit of a riff on kind of the title of like today, um, but with a focus on how not everything needs to be on Ledger. Um, you can do things off. And actually to, I think it was Anom Anoma's like, point earlier, there's a lot of benefits from a privacy angle. Um, so this is us. Uh, so probably key people to call out from here, like myself and Anka, used to work together at Accenture. Um, I actually led a project here with the Dutch government doing digital passports using SSI. Um, and then Alex also has uh, studied here and did loads of SSI with, with, kind of, um, with the Dutch government. So uh, what we'll be covering really, really quickly. Um, so SSI or decentralized ID, they're kind of used interchangeably. Some people hate one term, some people hate another. Um, they're fine. Um, but kind of focusing on like what does it look like and then kind of how is it different to other privacy projects which may have been talked about today and then get into kind of maybe what we're building and then hopefully a Q&A if we've got time. Um, originally this was scheduled for like 30 minutes so we'll see if I can rattle through a bit quicker. Um, so easiest way of saying SSI, HSD ID is just, yeah, not your keys, not your data, sorry, not your keys, not your coins for data. Um, like. When we kind of came into like the Web3 crypto space, we kind of assumed that everyone would know what SSI, decentralized ID is. And we pretty much just found tumbleweed, like no one knew at all. Um, despite everyone having like this really big focus on anonymity or pseudonym pseudonymity, and generally on like having ownership of whatever you're dealing with. Um, and this is kind of like shifting kind of how data is used at the moment to how it, we argue it should be used. And really the, the big difference is instead of centralizing around organizations or companies, you're centralizing around the individual. So even though you've got the term decentralized ID, really it's centralized around the user. Um, so following that whole like design principle of like user-centric design, that's basically what this is. Um, but the best way of really describing it is to go through like some use cases of how this could potentially work and what we'll be building. And cool. So um, everyone probably in this room has been like hit by a scammer at some point or like been contacted like maybe by a fake exchange, maybe by like a fake BD rep, um, or maybe even someone pretend to be a team member just to try and put, like get keys off you. Um, and one of the things that like we'll be end up working with partners in the coming kind of weeks and months is actually like skipping past this whole like NFTs for identity thing and issuing credentials out so they can prove it, who like people can prove who they are. But very much like not building this around like one central entity and not necessarily doing KYC. So this doesn't need like you to register with a passport. It doesn't need you to um, kind of go through the, like an onboarding process. All it needs is someone with a reputation, whoever that is, to basically attest to who you are. So for us as a company, the fact that we've been through Outlier Ventures Basecamp is like a good tick in our box. The fact that we invested in by Ignite is another thing we can point to and we can like prove. And we can build up kind of reputation for both the company and the individuals who work for it without needing a centralized kind of orchestrator of all of this, like a LinkedIn. And the upshot of this is basically anyone can start proving who they are to each other without a central authority. But also, as we kind of get onto later on, without having to write anything on chain. Like all of this stuff takes, like, uh, takes place like above the top of the ledger um, with really like only the core capabilities on the bottom. A more, probably a cooler example though is like actually making gaming um, kind of portable. So like this is the ability to like purchase avatars, shift them, shift experience, shift reputation, and basically bring those between games or ecosystems or metaverses. Um, so this could be like, we, we've kind of blogged about this a while ago, but this could be something as daft as like the Charizard that you grew up with and create off across like Pokemon Red all the way through to the latest games and raised. Suddenly you can take into like Super Smash Bros and it has like a unique character set, but it's also something you've created and had a relationship with for years. It also extends to like 
being able to prove avatars match the real life kind of person if necessary. Um, like obviously a lot of people online want anonymity, but we're also starting to see people where they are a public name. Um, like they're well known, they have a profile and they're gonna start presenting in the metaverse and they need to prove it's them who is doing it. Um, so a great example is like some CEOs or like bands, blah, 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 are starting to do addresses in like metaverses and they need to prove that it's them and it's not a deep fake and not someone faking their voice. And so there's kind of wrapping all this up again and providing like proof that an individual is who they say they are and have that ability. And this is kind of, um, we published this before the EU kind of position paper came out recently. Um, but this is looking at like, if you were to start adding on privacy preserving um, kind of reputation or kind of KYC onto DeFi. And we know that there's people like T-Grade and others that are kind of looking at this as well. Um, but what this effectively, effectively allows for is like you can register, get KYC'd, and we've basically got this idea where um, someone can spin up a pool, they can set kind of entry criteria for that pool, and they don't need to record really anything about the individual. All they need to know is that they have passed certain criteria. So in this kind of scenario, you'd be able to have someone create a pool that excludes the US entirely, so they know that they would never need to worry about kind of the SEC coming after them. They may be able to set a policy where you have to prove you're over 18. You don't need to give your date, your date of birth, like your address, your name, anything, but all they need to know is that you are over the age of 18, which you can kind of prove with a mix of like SSI, which we'll be building out, and also zero knowledge proofs, which have been spoken about as well. Oh. So if I go kind of just wrap these up, like these were just a few examples of the kind of stuff that we'll be building. But the kind of the bigger impact of this is like SSI across just everything. So one of the best impacts that this is probably going to have is it should just get rid of passport, sorry, passwords. Um, like if you can authenticate to a strong level using data that you hold and do it in a privacy preserving manner, you can effectively eliminate passwords out. Um, and we're starting to see like some of the bigger companies. So um, a vast antivirus bought like an SSI company recently. Um, they're one, the company they bought, Evanim, one of our investors. Um, and they're looking at like how they might build that into their, their wallet. Um, and kind of that's very much like off in the future, but like they've got such a scale that if they go after this, they could just eliminate like passwords entirely. And that also makes it like single sign-on. So um, I imagine, again, most of the people in this room have had to create like a huge number of accounts for various stuff recently. I'm finding that whenever I go to buy anything, even if it's once, I'm having to create a full account now, which is pissing me off no end. Um, and it'll kind of basically get rid of that as well. Like if you can immediately register, transact without having to enter all of your personal details, like the user experience is gonna be so transformative. And I think one of the current frustrations I had was I had the KTDI demo on my phone. Um, obviously don't anymore having left the project, but like I've seen what this can look like and it's so slick. Like you, it's very hard to kind of go back to the current world where like things are clunky, you're entering your details all the time where you've not had to before. Um, so this is where we get kind of get into the meat of it and like how this is different to some of the other like privacy um, and kind of portability projects that you'll, you'll see. So this is where we're kind of contrasting against like the, maybe the likes of Secret Network um, and, and kind of uh, when, uh, I can't remember who it was who was speaking about like, um, like tumblers, that kind of stuff um, and how this is a bit different. So uh, yeah, this is the main kind of thing. So personal data does not hit the ledger. So um, there are various different ways of implement implementing SSI, um, but one of the kind of primary rule, like aims that we go for is personal data just shouldn't be on the ledger, and it really doesn't need to be either. So the whole point of this basically is if you're putting data on the ledger, as, as someone spoke about earlier, it's correlatable. Like you can start unpicking like who's writing when, even if you can't necessarily read the data, you can start tracking people across the network. And if you can start kind of breaking the encryption, if, if that does happen, you suddenly just expose a load of personal data that really didn't need to be there in the first place. So that's where we get onto like what's called in, the, in SSI, the trust triangle. Um, and basically what this is doing is using decentralized PKI, which I won't go into too much detail on, but like basically keys on ledger so that when data's issued and data's received, like you can actually verify that data without any of it needing to be written to the ledger at all. 
So literally across this, you've got like someone issuing data to an individual. That individual shares that data on. The data was originally signed by someone, and then the kind of person who receives that can go back and check that the signature on that data is matches who issued it. They can check kind of the reputation of who issued it, but they can also check that all of that data was kind of encapsulated, encrypted, and hasn't been tampered with it as well. And again, all of this without hitting the ledger at all. Um, and this is just in case anyone wondered what the kind of a did on the left hand side. Oh, sorry, yeah, left hand side of this was. Um, it's basically a decentralized identifier, and kind of there's re a really technical kind of jargony thing on the left hand side. Um, but a much easier way of thinking about it is like a car registration plate. All it does is uniquely identifies the car and tells you who owns it if you eventually trace it up. Um, but the key thing is, like these are typically. On le the ones on Ledger are typically companies or organizations. They don't need to be kind of individuals, and they shouldn't be individuals. Like, there's no kind of need for that at all. And there are some pretty major benefits to this approach. Um, so uh, one of the biggest things is much higher system throughput. Um, so I think someone spoke earlier about like you can like horizontally and vertically scale um, scale networks. And the beauty of this is because we're putting less on Ledger. Actually, when we do scale vertically and horizontally, we get much more out of it because there's, there's so much less, less on there in the first place. Um, the other part when we're kind of looking at stuff like IBC is um, we get a lot easier interop with other networks, even outside the Cosmos ecosystem. And that's because kind of the primitives on the ledger are so kind of much more simple than, than other networks say that you can actually replicate them across ledgers. And because all the data is also moving across ledger, as long as each one is contactable, you can start routing stuff kind of across ledgers. That's one of the kind of core aims of SSI is across the entire stack having interoperability so you're not locked into one provider. We're not just creating like a different data silo to a Facebook or a Google. And probably the final bit is like the really key bit, which is um, extremely privacy preserving. So like, with no personal data on, on the ledger, like there are so f like fewer attack factors for this. Like you can't watch like signing events on the ledger because there aren't any with regards to personal data. You you can't look at the two parties involved because that's not there. Like suddenly you're really restricted into like um, you you've got to literally be either one of the companies or the individual involved in that transaction or speaking to them directly to get anything out of them. And that's one of the really, really big focuses of like the SSI ecosystem as a whole, like is eliminating privacy leakage. Like it's very much come from a like privacy focus. Like we want to get as far away from the Facebooks, the Googles of, of the world, and very much back into like giving people back that control and giving people back their data. Um, and to focus on that, on that kind of that last point again. So drilling even drilling in even further, like. Even though the data is going off ledger, like you can still combine this tech with stuff like ZKPs, so zero knowledge proofs. Um, so even when the data is off ledger, you can still restrict the data even further um, and make it kind of much more privacy preserving. So, um, like a really good example for this, and there are many where this like this tech I kind of gave one in the DeFi side, like makes sense. Um, but for example, like loads of people will have bought booze or cigarettes at some point and use their driving license or passport to kind of justify their age. Um, especially when people are going into nightclubs, like obviously you used to just flash an ID card, they ba barely pay attention to it and you'd walk in. But now there's a much more focus on like people scanning them, they're checking them against databases and all that kind of stuff. And if you think about it, all they really need to know is, are you over, over the age of 18? Like that's it, they literally need to know that the ID matches your face and you're over 18. Um, and that's where this can get to. Like, not only can you have the data routing off ledger and no privacy, blah, 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 you can also restrict what's being shared. So you can really drive it down to just two pieces of data and not even kind of your date of birth. So the creepy guy who's like the bouncer on the door of the club doesn't need to know anything about you. All he needs to know is that you're allowed in. Um, so then, in the final kind of bit, I'll just move on to like what we're building and how it fits with kind of everything we've gone before. So, um, basically, like myself, Anchor, and the rest of the team have been involved in various projects in SSI across like the last four years. Um, like we built some pretty cool stuff with like a couple of governments, like National Health Service, and a few others. So, 
Um, but the same thing kept on happening. Like everyone loves the paradigm. Like everyone loves the like privacy preserving side of stuff. But the thing that was really holding it back was like making money. Like if you're going to take data out of like a centralized silo that people monetize, you have to replace it with something. Like you have to give some revenue that kind of like covers it off. Um, so what we'd repeatedly hear is like, oh, this is really cool. The user experience is amazing. How does this commercially work? Like, how does this replace advertising revenue? How does this replace like the service fees that I get? So we're focused on like building a, uh, a clear incentive model for the entire SSI ecosystem. So um, the example here is KYC. Um, but what we're effectively doing is like when that data is issued and whenever it's used, there's going to be like a monetary value that's transferred, and all of that is like pit, it's blinded, like no one involved like outside of the ecosystem can see, no one outside of the transaction can see. Um, but what it does mean is that whenever that credential is reused, the person who issued it in the first place gets paid, or the individual gets paid. So an example might be if you use your passport, um, you can kind of get paid back for this. Um, but the key thing here is really, it just incentivizes the entire ecosystems. And our theory is basically that by kind of incentivizing these ecosystems, you can start pulling all of this together and start interconnecting them so data moves across. Um, and really for us, the, the massive upshot for this is there are hundreds of thousands of these ecosystems. Um, and yeah, so it was the right slide. So, and this is maybe where we're slightly different to other projects as well. So rather than trying to build like a vertical stack, like we are focused purely on the network layer. Um, and what that means is instead of trying to build like up into wallets, up into like specific use cases, what we're actually doing is working with like 30 or 40 of the SSI partners around the world to build on top of the network. They already have clients, they already have use cases built out, so we just need to make them more successful at what they're doing and then help them branch out into new markets. So I think originally it was time for more questions, but I just got the like, we're running short on time from Agnieszka. So I think we start, and then at the point where I get tackled off stage is the point where we stop. I've got one minute. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if there are any questions, more than happy to answer. If not, that gets us back on time, I think. It doesn't work, oh no, it works. Okay, so, um, uh, did you also look at, you could also like um, monetize your own data with this? Is that also uh, uh, something you're looking at? Yeah, yeah, so um, if I go back really quickly, um, you'll notice like there's a flow back to the issuer, but there's also flows to the holder. So like we know that there are lots of companies focusing on like monetizing individuals' data. There's been loads of experiments with this, and typically you don't make that much money. Like, it's 50 quid for literally everything about you. It's not a lot. At the same time, like, there are definitely benefits to it. Uh, one of the best examples we could see is, like, in, um, in e-commerce, like, there's loads of fraud, tons of it. And it's all basically credit card fraud. Um, and one of the things here is that, like, there are loads of co um, cashback sites where you get click-through revenue for going through ads, like Top Cashback and, and similar ones. And you could basically do the same thing where if you do like, you can use SSI to do like a one click kind of checkout experience. And at that point, it's probably worth rewarding someone for one, dropping your fraud rates, as well as like simplifying and having less fallout in the checkout process. So like, it's probably marginal, but it's still definitely worth doing. Um, I think we're kind of not like going headlong into it. So it's something we'll enable. And probably the thing that I should have said is like we're not dictating the way we're going to build this all out is effectively provide tooling across like across the ecosystem. So we'll just build the tooling and then let the ecosystems and the industries and the clients figure it out. So we're not going to specify, but what you've described really could quite easily come around by someone just deciding to go and build it on top of the rails. Great question, by the way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fraser.